Hello everyone, uh, good to see you here. My name is Vincent and uh, today we'll be talking about AngularJS, um, how it fits into the realm of MVC and uh, I'll wrap up with a little demo on um, you know how to use the weather app or weather API tied in with Angular and spit it out on the front page. Um, so um, first I want to talk a little bit about Angular and its place in web development. So uh, to start off, Angular is a front-end JavaScript framework, and so itself is not a language. It's more of just an organization of files um, that help you make what we call today a single-page application, or SPA for short. So the benefits of this are that a single-page application really helps you optimize the way um, a site is rendered because it's not just individual HTML files where you have to repeat code a lot. It's basically a single page and you swap in and out different HTML elements that help you um, uh, render the page faster so you don't have to keep rendering the entire page over and over. Um, so, and this is all powered by um, kind of like the muscle of the framework, which is uh, JavaScript code. Um, in controllers, services, factories, and um, you know other Angular resources. Uh, Angular resources, sorry. Um, and so uh, that's kind of how Angular works, and how it sort of um, why a lot of developers use it is because it's it's once you learn the basic directives, basic controllers, and the interaction between that and HTML templates. Um, you, you, you can really build a scalable website fairly quickly and um, it's also pretty high performant. So it, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a really powerful tool and, and I suggest you all uh, listen to the rest of this video and, and learn all about it. So um, next thing I want to talk about is MVC. So this is key to how AngularJS works. Um, you know, AngularJS, like Backbone.js, Ember.js, amongst other frameworks, is based upon this idea, this concept of MVC. So they're all each individual implementations of the MVC design pattern. So MVC stands for Model View Controller. Um, the, um, the idea is that the model um, holds the data. It's just like a general wrapper, a, a, a representation of your data that's stored in your database. Um, so that way you kind of have it as structured, as a structured um, data set or data object rather, um, that can be rendered uh, on your front page, used in controllers or services, etc. And the view is the, you know, what is displayed on the screen. So that's kind of your HTML file, um, or files rather. So these are all the templates, um, this is what is uh, being put in and out and um, being swapped in and out rather uh, by your JavaScript. And finally, the controller is kind of the, um, the meat of the application. Um, this is what allows you allows Angular to um, take data or grab data from your database or another data source, um, set it as a model, um, in a structured way and have that be rendered on a view um, your UI, your browser, whatever, what have you and it's kind of like this, the, the, the liaison between the model and the, the view so uh, a key concept here is the model and the view are um, they're, they're independent of each other they don't need to know about each other the model doesn't need to know how the view is being displayed on the front and the view doesn't need to know how the model is being held in the back so uh, the con only the controller needs to deal with that. And that's a huge plus because um, from a development standpoint, um, I can manage the data while someone else manages how it looks without knowing exactly how the data is being structured in the back and vice versa. So this is, these are huge positives in MVC and um, it's why it's, it's, it's the foundation of a lot of application building um, because of the fact that it's super scalable and um, basically has you build things in, mod in a modular fashion. Um, so that's kind of MVC. 
a little bit of Angular, and now I kind of want to just give you um, a, a little infographic, an explanation of how this all works together. So here is um, here is the view. So actually, I guess I should start from the user. So you, let's say you're a user of some sort of say and say uh, sort of website, um, and so the user goes and checks out the view. The view is HTML formatted with CSS, and here. This is all centered around Angular. So Angular has views that basically um, talk to the controllers, or rather the controllers talk to the views, um, grab the necessary data, um, and basically from the servers, spit it out on the views, or it takes it, stores it in the models, so that later when the view needs it in a different format, It'll go talk, tell the controller, and the controller will grab the model in a package fa fashion and spit it on the view, and vice versa. So perhaps, like if a user were to click a button, the controller would have an event handler that understands that oh, you know, a button was clicked, this happened, and what do we want to do? You know, perhaps it's a form that says register a user. So when when I say register this user, this controller picks it up and says, oh, you know, they want to register this user. Let's grab the form data that was just inputted and store it in the model, and then store it on the server for long-term keeping and for you know backend processing. So today I want to go through a demo on, um, you know, that that touches on all these pieces, and um, I, the server in this instance won't be you know like an on-prem server, like a server or like something you know, that we have, that we manage, but it will be a server that, um, in a sense, is basically an API. So it's just data coming from somewhere else, basically. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it. So what I have here is I have scaffolded a, um, let's see, I have scaffolded a AngularJS web app. Um, it's like a skeleton boilerplate code um, using Yoman. Um, so, what's it called? Uh, it's called Angular Demo. Yep. So this in here in Angular Demo, I have you know all these files that were just scaffolded and kind of given to me to by default. So um, uh, the way this works, a little background is it uses Grunt um, to power my local development, um, Yoman to scaffold my site. Um, so I can build kind of templates and modules and things like that really easily. Um, and then I have um, uh, the other service, uh, the other the other tool is Bower, which kind of handles the dependencies on my front end code. So here you can see, um, let's see, I'll just say grunt serve and see what pops up. So here, this is just the basic app, Angular JS app that was created with Yoman. So, hello, hello, always a pleasure scaffolding your app. Splendid, great, cool. And then there's a couple different pages. And so, yeah, pretty simple stuff. Um, so, uh, let's see. So let's dig into some code. Um, okay, let's do that. And open up the code. So um, before I start writing any code, let's dig into what code, um, you know, where everything is held. So all my Bower components are here. Uh, my node modules are here. And um, let's see. So everything within app is kind of um, the Angular stuff, if you will. <laughs> and so here's the index.html file. Um, even if you've done a little bit of web development, you'll have you'll have seen index.html is kind of the first page to get served up typically on a web browser if you're accessing um, this directory uh, of your web app. So as you can see, it has the head with you know with style sheets, dependencies, um, body, script with a little GUI analytics tag in there, and um, other script dependencies, so JavaScript dependencies. Cool, and down here you can see the controllers. So here, what Angular is doing is it's rendering index.html. You're thinking, you know, how did all this happen? How did all of this show up when this Angular, when this index.html file only has this much code uh, in the body? Well, uh, as you can see here, 
uh, in the nav bar, this is all just this up here. Because this is on every single page, I'm going to put it here. And then the footer is on every single page as well. So basically, I don't need to rewrite this every time I make a new HTML page. It's just going to be there, and it's just going to stay fixed. So that's, uh, you know, I don't have to re-render that, which is great. <laughs> so um, the magic of Angular is that everything happens in this one line. Div ng view equals, uh, you know, question empty string uh, and div. So this you can imagine as like a portal. It's like a window to all the templates. So everything in here is from here to from here down to here. So everything here, everything in the body minus the font, uh, minus the footer and minus the uh, header. So here, this information, this content here, is being rendered dynamically on the fly as soon as this page is hit. So how does this all happen? Um, and, and, and what's the logical procession as to what gets rendered first and what gets brought in later? So um, the, the way that works is, you know, all of your HTML templates are in your views. Style, CSS, here. Scripts, um, you know, you have your app JS, about, and your main. So these are all the controllers that um, are tied to each individual HTML page. So you know, an about HTML page has an about controller, and this main HTML page, which is what you saw here, it belong uh, contains uh, relates to a main controller here. So these controllers don't really have anything. It just created this this awesome things um, list of things, I guess. Uh, that's not being used. And then app.js is a unique JavaScript file that holds all of your module configs and settings and whatever have you. So this is what gets uh, run first as Angular. This is kind of like the central node of the entire web of Angular, uh, Angular's system. So in your config, in your router, what a router is is basically just a way for Angular to know that you know depending on what URL you're hitting, which template to spin up. So right now I just hit the slash, I mean it's a pound slash endpoint. So this one will go to here. So it says like dot win, it's just a slash, go to views and main.html and spit it out into here in place of ng view. So main dot let's go here main dot html is this guy so that's why this was rendered first yeah, before anything else so you know just to demonstrate um, you know if I go to slash about it'll bring up the about view which is here oh sorry which is here you know this is the about view all right great cool so um, that's kind of how Angular works. Um, the routers are kind of the central node to this whole web of HTML files, and each HTML file is defined here with a main control or with uh, with a controller associated controller and uh, the controller name or alias name. So uh, so that's kind of how Angular works, um, just to begin with. And uh, so now so now let's get into some code a little bit. So here, you know, main.html, I can change, um, you know, hello, hello, I'll say, welcome, welcome. And grunt's great because it'll just re-render upon seeing that there's been a change. Oh, let's make that welcome, that looks kind of ugly. Cool, so welcome. Uh, yeah, this is Vincent's page. Great. Okay, cool. So, you know, as you can see, this is just basic editing here and there. Um, nothing too new, uh, aside, for, aside, for, aside from the Angular uh, structure of all the files and how they interact with each other. So, um, you know, let's get into a little demo on interacting with the controllers and how the controller deals with the views and the models, because um, Right now, you've just seen that there are HTML files, there are JavaScript files, and those are somehow related um, as a view in a controller. But let's really get down to building a feature so that way you know exactly what piece lands where.
given a certain situation. Um, so let's start with the main.html. Or actually, let's start with the about.html. Since this is a blank page, I don't have to like mess around too much with anything, delete anything. So here, I'm going to delete this. Um, so there's nothing here. Um, basically, I'm going to say about. Uh, this is my weather page. So I'm, what I'm hinting at here is that we're going to use the weather API and grab some data using controller and services and come back, uh, spit it up in a model, and then render it out as the view. So that's kind of a whole workflow. Um, let's put this in like a little div tag. Cool. And then um, here we can say, uh, you know, let's check it out about.js. Okay, cool. So there's nothing in here that's really too meaningful. So let's go delete that and nothing should change. Correct. Okay, cool. So here, what I want to do is I want to say, you know, as a little pseudocode, um, everything in here should have, uh, it's, it's, it's rendered all the data between one controller and one view that are associated will have access to a scope. Uh, so basically, this scope is just kind of this parent element that has variables attached to it. So you can call it whatever you want. For instance, I'm going to call it, you know, scope dot cities found uh, equals, um, you know, nothing. Just a list of an empty list. So here I can access scope.citiesfound is nothing. I could also say scope oops, scope dot location equals Seattle. So what's going on here is you know I'm setting this model as location and setting it this variable as location, setting it this string called Seattle. And if I bring it out here, I could say, you know, uh, div. Here, let's, let's create some space. Div. Um, there's this neat directive called ng model. And this is how models work in Angular, and they call it location because there was one here called location Seattle. And without even doing anything, it should render. This is the templating language. So what's going on here is I'm naming this model, this div element, as location with this model. And uh, here, I'm using Angular's templating language uh, to dynamically render in what the value of this location scope variable is. So the value, remember, was Seattle and spitting it out on the fly into this you know, double star brace notation um, in this div. So as you can see, Seattle is popping up here. What's also cool is, you know, if you have input, uh, you can say input type equals text, ng model equals location. So what's going on here is when I say ng model equal location as an, uh, a property of input, I'm actually associating this input with this location. And so everything in here, um, as you can see, it says Seattle, which is cool. Um, so it's just putting this in the default text of this text box. So what I can do is actually um, notice how this template's still here. And it's, like I said earlier, it's dynamic. I'll show you how dynamic it is. If I say, if I delete that, it's all gone. If I start typing, wow, this is so cool. It's just starts rendering on the fly and everything just exists. Um, um, this will show up right above me. So cool. That's kind of how Angular works in terms of models um, and how the models, how the controller has access to the models, how the views have access to the models. And so, uh, you know, that's something that's really neat and really powerful in terms of a, um, you know, scalable app. Um, concept.
So next we're going to get into a little bit more. So, you know, I had explained that a little bit before we got into the weather API. So the weather API will have, um, let's see, it will have a, it will have a location as well because we want to make sure that we're getting data about a particular location. And so this is my weather page. Uh, let's not do that. Let's take this out. Cool. So here I can say, you know, enter a location to find its weather, to find its weather info. Right? say it's a city it has to be a city okay cool so here it's going to look up a city right um, so how does it look up a city I can't just so I should say when I as a user from a user's perspective everything is user driven so if a user types in a city they should click submit and once it submits the uh, the general flow logical flow is once I click submit I take the location, the city location, I go query a, an API, um, in this case we're going to use the weather map API, and we're going to go query that. It's going to return a response with data in it, and that data is going to be handled by the controller, ripped apart and parsed apart, and rendered onto the UI as a, as a, as a view, um, dynamically. So let's start from the top. Uh, let's create a button. So let's create a button. Cool. So type, uh, should call it text equals submit. Oops, pick my new value. Ah, okay, sure, that works. So. Here, I should click submit, and once I click submit, something, once I click submit, this data, this parameter should go back into my controller and go and query this API. So what I'm gonna need actually is a, is a service. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna create a service from this JavaScript file and um, basically, this controller is going to call this service that goes in its sole purpose is to grab um, the API data and bring it back to retrieve it to the controller. So here I have the services folder which is empty. Create one called city search, city search.js. And here I'm going to grab some of this guy. Script. Okay, um, and it's going to be called dot factory. Dot factory. City search, and so here, um, I'm going to say return. We're going to use the dollar sign resource function and say return dollar sign resource um, some some URL <coughs> the open map URL open oops the open API for weather um, and this is the syntax to query so I'm gonna say find um, method get, um, and then I'm going to add some params because we want to say search by city. So params um, query Seattle. All right, this query should be empty right now. Um, so by default, the query is empty. And, and when I type it in to the front end, the, the front, the view, 
uh, it should pull it in and save it as query and spit it out into and build this URL here so that it goes and queries the correct uh, API with the correct parameters. So params and that should be good. Let's add is array false. Okay. I think that should work. So what is this URL? Um, let's go and find it. Um, so I have here the openweathermap.org um, site. So the URL should be here. Okay, cool. So I've signed in already. I made an account, got an API key. The URL should be, let me just grab this from here. Um, this. So Postman is this really cool tool that allows you to go and query a URL like we are doing now and see what the response looks like. So um, here it's like API dot this whatever this is how Open Weather Map wants you to query their API and then instead of Q equals Paris it should be um, Q equals, let's call it, and then this colon query means stick this parameter query into this spot. And that way it'll dynamically build that URL at runtime and it'll go query the right for the right data. So an app ID and most a APIs need an API key, so you need to sign up. And you know, for this case, it's fr in this case it's free. So they gave me a free API key, which is right here. So I'm just gonna say that, and that should work. So basically, what this is doing is it's using dollar sign resource, which is an Angular way of querying an API for its data, and it's saying find. This is one of its functions. Um, do a get request with these params and say it's not a, it's not an array. Make sense? Cool. And it's returning it, so meaning I need to call it from here. So I need to say, um, right now, this button, here's another cool um, Angular directive, and you click. So what I mean by that is when I say submit, um, upon clicking submit, it should do something in the controller. So in this case, I'm going to say, um, upon submit uh, query weather. So with the parentheses notation, it means that it's a function which I haven't created yet. Uh, so it should be a scope function dot query weather equals function. So right now I'm just creating a uh, query weather function which does nothing right now. Um, but I will need to say dollar sign scope dot um, create cities found equals city search because it's the file that's the um, service name so I need to inject it here as a dependency uh, notice how when I'm using dollar sign scope I need to inject it here as well so it means in this context of this controller uh, this scope or city search service or factory or you know whatever other dependency you need exists so here I'm saying dollar sign scope that cities found and because the function is in city search.js I need to go reference that service over there so um, here it says dollar sign scope dot query whether equals function what am I doing save set scope dot cities found which is empty list right now equal to city search dot find remember that was a function um, what am I finding I am finding this param called query and I'm gonna set it as scope dot location cool so what this means is scope dot location which is that model go and save it to query this parameter named query and when I do city search dot find it passes it into this query saves it here so instead of being an empty string it will be scope dot location and it will pass it into this URL. Go query this all together, 
return back to here and finally save it as scope.queryweather um, or sorry save it as scope.citiesfound um, so now I'm going to just add a line saying scope. Um, uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, so now that that all is squared away, the whole workflow from view upon clicking this button passes that parameter to the controller, and from the controller, it takes it and queries it using this service. Um, we should be all squared away. So let's try this out. Run to serve. Great, and it's in about. So let's say Seattle. Submit. Oh, nothing happened. Why did that happen? Because we haven't actually taken this data and done anything with it yet. We haven't used any of Angular's templating to spit it out on the view, or rather the about.html file. So what we're going to do is um, let's first check to see if this returned anything. So Seattle, let's open up developer tools. Oh, what is this? Oh, okay, so what it's yelling at me at is that this city search doesn't exist. Um, so I'm trying to do a bunch of things here, but my index file doesn't know that that exists. So let me just add this guy as a dependency uh, here. Mm, not controller services slash c search dot js script great cool so now it's not yelling at me so here is Seattle submit oh what do you know it came back with something in a list of an array and it looks like I got all the weather I needed uh, which is really cool. So it looks like there's some light rain and then some mist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So let's um, take this data instead of just printing it out on the console. Let's do something with it. Um, oh, and by the way, this is developer tools and it's super great in terms of debugging and figuring out what's wrong with your site when you're developing. And um, it is your friend. It is a great friend of yours as a developer. <laughs> so here, now that you know that it's stored as cities found, um, you can go back to your HTML page and actually you can, you know, let's, let's create some space here. You can actually use the templating language because I remember you can use templating language with any scope variable. Um, you can say city cities found. Make sure you don't write any typos. So right now it's just empty. So what I should say is if it's empty, then don't print out this ugly little bracket thing, open close bracket. So what you should do is say, you know, wrap it in a div. And here's another cool ng directive, Angular directive, ng if. So ng if cities found, so basically if this scope variable exists, if this model exists, uh, then then you print it out. Otherwise, don't print it out. Um, if this, there we go. Okay, cool. So if this exists and if it has, uh, I guess it exists because it's an empty string. But if its length is not greater than zero, then don't print it out. You know. So um, let's try that and see if it prints out. If I just type Seattle, uh oh, what's going on here? I know what's going on here. Let's change this. So instead of being a list of cities found, let's do that. Cool. So now it looks like you have all this data and what is this jumbled up stuff? Let's use a nice little tool that um, I like to use that I found online is uh, JSON viewer. So what this does is click format, you format this bad boy, and it turns into this nicely beautified JSON object. Um, 
So now you can see how your data is being returned. And let's say I wanted to grab the name of, you know, what's important to me from a weather perspective. Let's say I, as a user, you know, I searched up Seattle. What do I want to know? I want to know the, the name of the place I searched up. I want to know, um, you know, what the weather is, what the temperature is. Uh, let's say what the um, humidity is here, pressure, uh, temperature, uh, humidity. Um, hmm. Let's see. None of this. Uh, let's check out this guy. You know, let's see. Looks like there's some rain or mist or something like that. Let's just take. Um, yeah, sure. Let's let's take these descriptions. Cool. So now that I know what data I want, um, I'm going to say, you know, instead of printing out as this raw JSON format that doesn't look too great, I'm going to print it out nicely formatted, or at least, you know, in a more readable fashion. <laughs> so here, instead of cities found, I'm going to use this new um, um, and Angular directive called ng-repeat. So this is basically just a for loop that iterates through an entire list of JSON, rather, uh, you know, and go through each individual JSON object in the list and pick out individual parts that you need. So here, uh, let's use the description tags, and then here ng repeat equals um, city in cities found. So what I'm doing here is um, I'm taking each city in the cities that I found and printing it out here. So let's say city Seattle. Cool. So it looks like I just printed out every single object on this first line here. Message, cod, count, list. So it thinks these are all cities. <laughs> so in that case, these are clearly not cities. Um, it's just a list of one item. So this is actually the level I want to be ng repeating through. So here, I'm going to say cities found dot list. So it's going through the list now, I hope. Cool. So let's let's like find something that's more like Alexandria. Uh, so you know, one, two, three, four. So it's got four different cities named Alexandria, and it's going through each one and printing out the city as each block. So I mean, I don't. I still this still doesn't look that great. So let's go through and get the pieces that we want. Um, let's make this a little better. Um, okay, so. Let's say we want the name, right? So now you can just play around with city as a variable because it exists here. So it'll do it for every single city every time you do this templating, as long as it's in the ng repeat, um, you know, it's contained within the ng repeat context. So city.name, uh, I should say, put it here in the description. So this is city name right so let's check that out before I go further cool so I did Alexandria four times because <laughs> I guess they're the same name which is which makes sense because that's what I searched for so let's uh, let's search something else now mm, now I want the temperature okay cool so temperature of each place um, it'll be city dot instead of name now it's going to be main dot temp cool and I'm going to keep going I want humidity humidity city dot main dot humidity and here I want uh, country, let's say country. So I'm going to want city dot. So city refers to everything in this level. City dot sys dot country. 
Gonna need a few more of these guys, it looks like. Oops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Lots of stuff going on here. Country, um, let's see, what do I want next? Um, let's just get the first element. So, whether it's, it's just, it'll be rain. So, to make it simple for us, so it'll be, um, precip, uh, I guess, like, weather. And weather, oops, and description. Right, weather and description. Okay, so weather. I'm gonna say city dot weather, and since weather itself is a list, as you can see in these square brackets, um, I'm, I'm I only want the first element. So I'm gonna say index zero, which first first element dot. Um, then I continue dot main, and then. I'm gonna do that with description, but instead of dot main, it's gonna be dot description. So it goes and gets the description here. Cool. I don't need this guy anymore. Great. So let's go check this out. So I'm gonna type in Alexandria. Cool. Wow. So as you can see, it's printing out the data. It's the same raw JSON data, but doesn't look raw anymore. It's going through each one and printing it out in uh, <laughs> relatively nicer, uh, relatively nicer fashion. So it's grabbing Alexandria. It's getting the temperature, humidity, country. Um, you know, weather. It looks clear. Sky's clear. Cool. And in in, in the U.S. in Alexandria, uh, you know, it's all clear. It's all clear. Everything's clear. Uh, you know, let's try something else. Let's try. Um, Seattle. Oh, there's only one. Uh, it looks like this is in, in Kelvin, I guess. Uh, or maybe not Kelvin. Probably not. <laughs> okay, so anyways, it's just going through, um, you know, and it's getting all this data and just parsing it and spitting it out nicely. And, you know, you can just use CSS. I'm not going to go into that, but you can use CSS to make it look super, you know, uh, you know, like a super nice on a, on a website. You can put colors on it, you can put formatting on it, spacing, uh, images, however you want. So that's kind of how Angular works. Um, I just use a very simple API to go grab data. Um, as you can see, the controller is the meat of all of Angular's actions. So as a user, I, I inputted a city into this uh, text, text field here, this input field, and I click Submit, and upon clicking Submit, um, this triggers a controller function. This controller function um, called query weather, and query weather goes and um, uses uses this service and calls find with this parameter. So it goes in here, and it goes and uses dollar sign resource to go query this URL. Does a get request with the parameter query from earlier, and returns it meaning it returns it here and saves it equal to cities found, which is a scope variable, and now I'm using it here. And I'm ng repeating through that to go parse out for each of the, each of the data points that I want, because a lot of the others were superfluous. So that is how AngularJS works on a very basic level, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and yeah, and that's it. And you know, you can use each page to do however, whatever thing you want. And as you can see, it's like loading very quickly. Everything is working really well. Um, and that, that's kind of the beauty of Angular. Uh, so once you learn those basic directives and get a good handle on them, um, a lot of functionality you can you can do with those basic directives, basic controllers, services, etc. Um, and later on, you can get into building your own directives um, that suit your own needs uh, in a very special way. So uh, yeah, so that's Angular. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and uh, thanks for listening, guys.